In this video, I'll be covering this 100 amp hour Group 24 lithium iron phosphate battery from Lee Time. Uh, I'll be explaining what Group 24 is, what you use these batteries for, and how they're different from the other Lee Time 100, 100 amp hour batteries. And I'll do a quick unboxing, I'll do some testing, and I'll talk about price and my final thoughts at the end. Okay, before, before we get into covering what Group 24 battery is, let's do a little unboxing here. See, we got an owner's manual and a little waterproof plastic bag. And see what's in here real fast. We got the product manual. Uh, looks like a, some information about the battery. Service card, some information here. This is good, and some stickers. Put that aside. And here we have in the top, we have the little M8 bolts here. Let's see how many we got in here. We got four. That's good. They put two protective caps and they provided actually four studs. That's good. Got some extras in case we lose one. Let's get the battery out here. So the first thing I notice when I look at this battery is it's physically smaller than the other lithium iron phosphate batteries I've dealt with. And there's no strap. There's usually like a nylon strap going across here uh, that's removable. But this one has foldable handles, which I actually like that. And they fold out of the way. They're not sticking out or protruding in any way. Uh, this housing, like other lithium iron phosphate batteries, is ABS fire retardant plastic. Uh, it says actually group 24 right there, which I'll be covering in just a few minutes. It's 12.8 lithium iron phosphate battery. It's got 1280 watt hours or 100 amp hours. It says that here. So now let's check the shipping voltage that this battery was shipped with. And I don't know if you can see that. It is 13.1314, 13.14. That's perfect. So what is a Group 24 battery? So just like we have battery size standards for household electronics such as you know AAA, AA, 9 volt, you know you go to the store, you, no matter which no matter which uh, company you buy them from, Deer Cell, Everready, whatever, they're all going to be the same size. So just like we have standards for that, there's also group size standards for vehicles, uh, battery size standards for vehicles and RVs and boats, etc. These group sizes are published by the, in North America by the Battery Council International, or BCI. There, there's over 50 battery group size standards. Some most common ones are 24, like this one. There's 27, there's 31, 34, 35, and so on. Uh, a specific battery group size determines the physical size of this battery and the location of the terminals. So, uh, so the larger the number doesn't mean the more capacity. That really has nothing to do with it. It's just referring to the size. Uh, so different vehicle manufacturers, for example, will, will publish like a certain vehicle will have a group 31 battery, for example. And sometimes they'll say it'll take a 24 or 27, things like that. For example, my Nissan Armada had, uh, takes a, a group 27 battery. And even though the BCI publishes uh, specific standard sizes, but between different manufacturers, you'll see differences in the height and width, just slight differences, but they're very close. But you will see some differences there. So what is a Group 24 battery used for? Well, Group 24 is, is considered to be one of the most versatile of the group sizes in batteries. Uh, it performs very well in many applications, probably more than any other one. Uh, group 24 comes in several subcategories uh, that we won't really go over much, but they're, they're like 24F, 24H, or 24T, etc. with just slight differences in the physical dimensions. Uh, now, this is a deep cycle battery, and that's what this basically reviews about, uh, not for starting applications. You shouldn't start a vehicle with this. Uh, it's not designed for that. Um, this battery is best suited for energy storage. Uh, but if you're wondering if this could be used for trolling motors, yes, it can. It, doesn't, it does not have low temperature charge protection though, and Lead Time does make a battery specifically for trolling motors. It has a few extra features this one doesn't have, like low temperature charging protection. Um, it has a max amp draw, which is a little bit more than this one can handle. 
I think it goes up to 500 amps for like one second, something like that. I'll, I'll put the link below where you can go check that out if you're interested in a battery for a trolling motor. So if you're used to working with other lithium ion phosphate batteries, you've probably run across this size. This size is uh, the standard size I'm used to working with. Um, it's bigger than the Group 24. Uh, this is the equivalent of a Group 31. Uh, so the, the height on these things are about eight and a quarter. This one's eight and a half, this one's eight and a quarter. I'll put the exact um, measurements for the lead time on the screen. They're both about the same depth, a little over six and a half, a little over six and a half. The big difference is the depth, I mean the length. Uh, it comes in about 10 and a quarter, and this one comes in around 13. So even though they, they're the same specs, basically, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hours, 12.8 lithium ion phosphate batteries, this one is longer, and the battery terminals, of course, make, it makes them a little closer together. This is much wider between the terminals here. Now, lead time does have a uh, 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt uh, lithium iron phosphate battery that's a, pretty much the exact size and specs of this battery. Uh, but the really only difference, as a, other than the physical size dimensions I mentioned, is that this battery is three and a quarter pounds lighter. Uh, it comes in at 21 pounds. Other than that, the specs are the same. So now we're going to do a max load test. So the lead time battery has a 100 amp BMS built into it. Uh, so you can run 100 amps continuous. Uh, so I'm going to push it slightly over that. So the setup I have here is a DIY uh, solar generator I built. Um, I have a battery monitor here we'll watch with a timer. I have a a um, portable heater here and a heat gun that I can dial in the amps just a little over a hundred and I'll run that for five minutes. So let's get that going. And I'll zoom in here in a minute to the battery monitor. We got just as you can see, a little over 100. We have 115. That's a little too much. Okay, we got 103, 102, 101. Let's see. We need to stay over 100 here. Let me go up just a tad more. Okay, let's get this going. Got the timer started. Okay, it handled the five minutes, no problem. Let's check the batteries here and see if there's anything warm or anything like that. Everything's good, no problems, passed it. While I had this out, I was just wanting to show you a little tip, something I did. I've been looking at buying a ratchet, a new uh, socket ratchet when I take off the terminals uh, and different things. I've, I've always been afraid I was going to drop this across something and short it out. So I've been looking at buying one. They're around 20 bucks. Well, I found an old ratchet I had and I just got some heat shrink and put it around the handle. And now I basically solved the same thing without spending any money to do that. Okay, we're fully charged and we are starting the battery capacity test. We'll see if we can get 100 amp hours. We'll check back when we're done. So the capacity test finished overnight and we got 104.84 amp hours. So the capacity test passed. Before I open up this battery, if you find this information useful in this video so far, please like the video. YouTube will show it to many more people if you do that. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Okay, so I finally got this thing open. So we've got this open and I see here we have, you know, there's three 10 gauge wires for the negative here. 
and they're glued on so it won't loosen up. I've already tested it, it's top. Same thing over here, and this I looked at a second ago, it's a six gauge wire. If we have a look down in here, you can see everything glued. There's the BMS sitting on top of the cells down there. So we can see here. So I pulled this up and there is a stick there's a sticker on here that says Lee Time. And I don't know what this is exactly. It's a sticker on the BMS, but I'm not really sure if it's a Lee Time branded BMS or just a sticker put on here. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna see if I can get this out of the box and take a look at the cells. Okay, I got it out. And as you can see, we have laser welded bus bars on the cells. And I was able to pry up the foam here and scan this barcode. And as you can see here, these are EVE cells. From what I understand, those are very good. We have fiberboard in between. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Fiberboard in between each cell. Let's see if I can have a look here closer. This is BMS. I'm not an expert in these battery cells and BMSs, but if you are, then please put in the comments what you're seeing here. Here I'm showing some of the uh, specifications out of the owner's manual. You can pause the video to take a closer look, but I'll mention a few things uh, as I'm showing this. Uh, you have a 10-year service life with this battery and probably more. You get a five-year warranty. Uh, it's got grade A lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells and it has an IP65 waterproof rating. Here are the details out of the owner's manual and how you can connect these batteries in series or parallel. You can connect them as typical, 4S4P, uh, for up to 16 batteries connected together. So what are my thoughts on this new Lee Time Group 24 battery? So as learned in the video, Group 24 just refers to the physical size of this battery. Uh, it's very similar to the other Lee Time 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries except for the size. Um, I think Lee Time is targeting um, consumers that are looking to replace like an old AGM battery for example they have an old group 24 AGM battery and they just want to replace it this would be a perfect choice for that just drop in replace it done as far as the quality I knew going into this the quality was going to be good I've seen several YouTube videos uh, reviews already and when they first started Ampere Time they had some issues they worked through those and now they make a good solid battery uh, you can search YouTube for lead time reviews. You'll find lots of them. I, I, everyone that I've seen, at least, has been good. So uh, down in the description, I'm going to leave a link uh, to lead time's website. And by the way, I call them lead time. I'm not sure if it's lie time or li time, but I call them lead time. And that description, and down in the description, that link I'll leave to this battery and a few others I mentioned in the video. Um, there's also a coupon code down there. It's uh, either three or five percent. I can't remember right off right now, but I'll put that down below for you. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.